Hey everyone, Kyle once again. Welcome back to the next episode review of Oceano Co. Episode 10. <clears throat> and since the episode, I think this is one, another one, okay, this is one of probably the second best episode I've seen from the show um, after the whole episode dealing with Akane's suicide attempt with the whole cyberbullying, right? This will probably put definitely the very close second I, I've seen because this is, this is Kana's episode. Picking up like how how it left off, how about her dealing with her self confidence, seeing things she's not good enough, even though even though Mem and Ruby said she deserves to be the, the center of the group, right? And here she's still debating if she, if she decides to be the center of the group because the thing is though she's still in self doubt, still lacking her confidence. She can des she can do the job, right? But she's just still afraid she's still afraid that what happened during her time when she was a child actor and then at, what happened afterwards you know she's still afraid that you know she might she she's afraid of that feeling of failing fa failing that's what she's that's what she's afraid of. she's afraid to fail again and with the help of Ruby you know giving her advice you know say hey if we, we if you know it's our first time doing the, doing this you know of course we may fail but we can still pick ourselves back up again right you know, because Ruby was always acting so positive and so full of that positive energy, right? But, uh, but not all that, though, but, um, yeah, but this was a really great episode. I mean, we got one more after this, sadly, though, but, um, I'm still, I still love this show. I think it's pretty much the, the if not the, the best one I've seen this, this year so far. Because it really gives, uh, delves into Kana's, deep into Kana's character, because it reflects, because it reflects on the real life, you know, how... The, inter the entertainment, you know, industry does, you know, like her, just, like I said, she's, when she was a child actress, she was, she was doing great, you know, but with the years on, when she got older, you know, she couldn't find those jobs anymore, and basically just take all stuff, just basically throw her out, basically, but, um, <clears throat> and then after when she got older, you know, she, um, she tried attempting at singing, being an idol, though, but that didn't really work out, because, you know, like, in a flashback in black and white, right? Like, I like how it's, everything is in black and white, but except for her, where she's in full color. And she tried, she tried attempting to sing, right? And we see a crowd that was, like, not a very little crowd. You know, like, no one, like, she saw, like, she was explaining how some people have, like, the face of disappointment, saying, oh, is that all she got, right? You know, she tried to sell albums, but nothing was selling. And so, she, she's asking, she's asking for jobs, any jobs that's open, she'll take anything. But it's like, is there was no jobs left for someone your age? Wanted to go to like the one of the regular industries, right? So everything that she's been doing, it's been failed ever since she, you know, when she's grown up more, right? And it's not the same when you're a child actor, though, right? And even with when her mom said, "Yo, um, your grandma threw it back out," you know, I'm gonna be helping her. You can live on your own, right? And so, and also another thing, she didn't have any good parental parental guidance as well, so. <clears throat> So she, everything, everything is basically the whole world was, was collapsing all around her. Her own world was collapsing all around her, basically, and it it just badly affected her, and it was just been hard for her just to try to go get get by, or making ends meet, whatever, right? And so that's why she's been, you know, she's afraid of failing. She doesn't want to relive all that stuff which she's been through, right? Even with go with going. So she being the center of the group and just putting on this performance, right? Like I said, she can do the job, right? So like, because they brought in uh, uh, Pena again. Um, like I said, the the Mr. Bill, I could just say, with that squeaky voice that Mr. Bill has. They brought he comes back to help to help train them more. So they're doing more jog and stuff, right? They see that um that you know, um Kana she can she can dance, she can do all the moves and stuff, right? And she can sing, like I said. It's just, it's that it's that feeling of fail of of failing in front of everything, for every of everything they're doing. That's that's what's holding her back. That's what's the why she's lacking the confidence and her and self doubting herself, doubting herself. Yeah. And then, and then she's just, she's talking to uh, to Pinyon, you know, and uh, it's like how she's easy talking to him because how because he's easy talking to him because you know he makes millions right and he's popular right and. And he's trying to get, like give himself self advice. Like he, he also explains like um, to Ru, uh, to, um, to Mem, right? She's explaining to Mem how Aqua is, right? Oh, I'm, we've been we've seen her since we were like childhood. We were acting on a scene, right? On a set, right? Since we were like four. 
And he thought he was an angel back then, but now he's grown up more. He's becoming more, quite more, quite the opposite, you know. So he's just like slamming him on that though, and but it was easy. It was easy for easy talking to to P, to Peon, right? And then while they were sleeping, she goes downstairs, and then, <laughs> which I which originally I thought it got me though, because she go down she goes downstairs, sees Peon um taking off his mask, right? And but it turns it turns out that it's Aqua. So seeing Aqua in that tracksuit and um, taking off the, the mask, right, kind of, like, mentally stuns her. But the thing is, which I thought that guy, I thought that was him the whole time, though, but it turns out, though, that um, the real Peon, he's on a beach somewhere, you know, because because he said that originally how the guy was ripped, right, and wears the mask, right, to get uh, wheel the ladies in and make the millions right on online, right? The real him, he's on a beach somewhere, you know, muscles and all, and, um, and so Aqua, he's been um, doing. Uh, he's been he's been playing ping on the, the whole time, and Kana's like, you know, oh, so it's like him the whole time, right? I mean, since he wouldn't talk to, since we know that we know that Kana, he, she, she's madly in love with Aqua. She's crushing on him big time, but since all the stuff he's doing, right? She's got just it's hard for her to talk to him, right? But it was easy fine when he was talking. When she was talking to Pinyon, right? So I'm like, was that really him? You know, and it, and it had it happened the night the night before we do our finally get our gig, right? So they finally go to the place. They see all these different groups and all everywhere everywhere else. There's like there's no, hardly no big changing rooms or every they're all just in one big group all at once with luggage everywhere and just whatever. And so, and then we have um. Connie, she's wa she's walking away, and she's just like I said, once again self doubting herself, thinking that she doesn't want to fail again. And the Ruby comes in, and, you know, trying to. She she was always acting so positive in every way, because she even tells a story when when the, when she was um trying to sleep right the night before, how she she dreamed of being an idol. She's she's recurring back with her previous life when she was sick in, in the hospital, right? How she met her first love, which is. The doctor, right? That it's now Aqua, but she always dreamed of being, being an idol when she was sick in the hospital. She first saw I on television. How she became a huge fan of hers. She didn't tell. She didn't explain who who the, who the person was though. She was a saint. The the person of I, I, I saw an idol on TV. I that's the moment I dreamed of becoming an idol though, right? And so yeah, so she's crying. She, she's recurring what happened to her previous life, and how she's still now. She's now becoming fulfilling her dream of being an idol, and that's why she's so positive. You know, she has nothing. She never lets nothing get her down. Basically, she doesn't want. Any, she doesn't want anything rooting what she has longed for her whole life. Basically, and she tells you know because she, she's telling Kana you know it's just you know it's okay and all that even though. We, we will take other even when we take on the stage, but even if we do fail, we can always just try again, right? So episode and then it ends right there. So this is this is the episode uh, ten. Even the last episode, episode nine. This has been more, more focused on Kana, which that was great because I I've enjoyed Kana as a character. I thought I, I think it's great that it's been focusing more on her because, like I said, her backstory was just you know. How the toxicity of sometimes how the entertainment industry can be, you know, like how it treats you, right? And that was really a full in-depth on her backstory, which I really liked because it does reflect how, in real life, how the entertainment industry, especially in Hollywood nowadays, I can fully understand that, you know? So I like how these little things, like I said, with the whole thing with Akane with the cyberbullying, I like how this show reflects on real life things. That's why I, why I like about, one of the things I really enjoyed about, like I said, how with Akane, the real life, you know, of cyberbullying of of on the social media platforms and stuff, right, can lead to attempted suicide, right? And here with Kana, you know, how from a child actor and then eventually, you know, you're once you get big as a child, you know, become big as a child, but then later in years when you're growing up more, um, you just get probably less and less, and they don't want you lose kind of you lose your popularity, right? And and we attempt to do like going from acting, attempting to doing and being an idol, failing, and like no one was wants to see you, right? And basically, your whole and the whole agency is like you've been with for a long time. Basically, they just throw you away and try. Oh, we'll just go to a different to a regular agency, right? 
and didn't have much parental guidance, you know, just basically tell mom her mom telling her to live on her own. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was it was such a such a such a tragedy you know, for for uh, for Kana, you know, it felt so bad for a character. It's like the same I felt I felt with Kana, about with Akane. I felt feel the same way with Kana. <laughs>